this video, I'm going to be showing you how to adjust water calculations in Brewfather the easy way. And when I say the easy way, I'm going to be doing this in layman's terms. I am a home brewer. I like brewing beer. I like drinking beer. I don't understand water chemistry. I have watched many videos. I did study it slightly for a few weeks to try and understand it. So I do have a very, very basic knowledge. If you really want to learn more, if you want to uh, really get into it and you want to do this properly, I'm going to put a link below to a guy who really knows what he's talking about, Tony Yates. He has some really good videos. I've watched them all a couple of times. They're really good. This is the easy method of how to adjust water additions in Brewfather. I'm now on batch 30. This is my method. If you scroll down and go to the water calculator there, you see you've got your grains, you've got your water volume, and then you've got your source. You can change the button here. I'm, today I'm going to be using reverse osmosis. Now, obviously, you could use your tap water. You could get a report done. The problem with that, as you all know, is your tap water is constantly changing. You're never going to get that accurate. It's going to be near enough, but it's never going to be accurate. So it is best if you really want to get into water chemistry and you really want to have the best pale ales, New England IPAs, is to use reverse osmosis water. And it gives you a nice clean slate. As you can see there, we've got 1084. It's pretty much zero ppm. You then want to select your target profile. So we do an American pale ale, but as you know, American pale ales, they used to be bitter. They still are bitter if you're drinking the West Coast ones. If you like me, you don't really like that bitterness anymore. I don't recommend choosing an American Pale Ale water profile. I recommend going to the Hoppy Napa, which increases the chloride, in layman's terms, reduces bitterness. Let's go with Hoppy New England IPA. I use that for all of my Pale Ales, New England IPAs, obviously. And then what you want to do is you go to the style. So we're doing an American Pale Ale. And what that did is it adjusted these ranges here. I won't go into that. You can play about with that with yourself. So let's just choose American Pale Ale. If you're like me and you only really like to adjust the mash, if you turn all the toggles off, Hit auto. That's it. <laughs> that is it. Then all you need to do is go to mash acid. I use fosoric acid, 85% concentration. If you see here, we've got 5.42. You could leave it. You don't need to add any uh, acid. So what I recommend here is you do the additions in your mash. 10 minutes later, the, you then take your pH reading and you see where you're at. If you really want to get that down to 5.2, the calculator here tells you, you want to be aiming for 2.8 milliliters. That's the easy way. That's all you have to do. Like I said, I've done 30 batches. I haven't always taken a pH reading, but when I have, it's very, very close to the point where I've not really had to do any additions. Sometimes it's gone a bit under. I've had to put in some baking soda. I've had to put in some acid just to adjust it slightly. But you don't really need to, to worry about it. As you can see here, though, if you did want to tinker with it a bit more, you can press auto. Sorry, you can toggle the sparge on. So if you really want to put some additions into your sparge water, again, you can press auto and there it tells you to put in 1.56 grams of gypsum, 4.42 grams of calcium chloride, 1.51 grams of Epsom salt, 
and then there you go in the sparge or another way of looking at this you press auto button if you see here we're not always green so the chloride here is zero to 100 you go down here and you see it, you're actually over here so you could toggle this if you really want to get that green keep toggling I'm going the wrong way aren't I keep toggling and you'll get in the green range uh, again here with the sodium toggle that a little bit and you'll get green and then we got the one there if you if I wouldn't bother touching this to be honest but if you really wanted to you could put some slate line in there and get that green I really wouldn't do that though I don't recommend doing that but you could put some baking soda in there if you want get that green I don't bother though to be completely honest the auto is fine it, it's so close that you don't really need to play about with this one thing that I like to do is I press auto you see there 2.9 I might just toggle that up and round it up these are all quite rounded which is cool but sometimes you know that might be 2.8 and that's 8.3 all I like to do is round these numbers up just so it's easier to measure <laughs> that's it you don't really have to worry too much about this yes if you want to be completely anal you can toggle with this as much as you want you really don't need to though you don't need to the auto button is close enough and that's it so you press auto you go to your mash acid you have a look up here you want 5.2 2.8 milliliters fosoric acid and then we've got three grams of gypsum 8.5 grams of calcium chloride let's round that up three grams of epsom salt save adjustments to recipe and there you go it is as simple as that yes you can get into more detail if you really really want to if you like me though and you just want to get on with it that's all you have to do that is all I do anyway. <laughs> I hope this video has helped people because I know that a lot of people are really scared of water chemistry. This is the easy method and it works. It really does. Okay. Cheers, everyone.